Now, possibly one of the most famous of the Vickers machine gun photos is this one from the Great War. So it's the perfect place to start with a uh, to, to continue our photo analysis analyses with a Great War photograph. Um, yeah, it's worth just saying that there, there are two versions of this: a slightly you know, uh, expanded one here, um, but then the, the cropped one uh, there. And quite often this is cropped even further, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Just to, to cover the uh, uh, description, it's a Vickers machine gun team from the machine gun corps wearing PH type anti-gas helmets in action near Avillier during the Battle of the Somme, July 1916. So, like I say, probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous, Vickers machine gun photo of the Great War. So let's take a closer look at this photo then. Uh, quick pick on the uniforms. We can see here that we've got the MGC shoulder title of the Machine Gun Corps in brass. Sometimes this has an I underneath it uh, or, a, um, or a C. Um, occasionally it's seen above it. You know, and that means I for infantry, C for cavalry, H for for heavy branch and M for motors. Um, yeah, the, the, these chaps are more than likely to be of the infantry branch. Uh, so that, but you can't see the I uh, at the bottom here. You normally see it sort of in there. Uh, it's clearly not there. So, but you know, they are machine gun sort or soldiers wearing their standard service dress. They're not wearing any equipment actually. So, uh, you know, that you'd sort of see the, the belt around here or perhaps the shoulder straps around there. Uh, they're not wearing any of that. So they're, they're literally just in their uniforms. And um, what, what we have got, though, is this here. You can just see the base of it around there. Uh, that is the waistcoat, the cape machine gunners, which is said to be a rare piece of equipment um, and it's certainly rare to see it in photographs uh, this is I think there's this and one other known photo of it being actually used in the Great War you've got this shoulder roll here uh, to stop barrels or um, anything falling off the shoulders or the tripod leg slipping off and then it it's padded you know, this this here is sort of a heat resistant pad there's a big wide collar uh, to, that you can flip up to stop the hot water jacket going against your neck it's only being worn by the number one and um, you know it, it in a way it's suited better to the number two because the number two carries the gun which would be hot but the number one is carrying the tripod so you know, it's certainly rare to see it it's great to see the fact that he's holding uh, the grips of the cross piece correctly uh, certainly would expect him to you know he's a trained machine gunner he um you know the, they are wearing the uh their gas hoods uh i'm not 100 percent sure yeah the, the the caption says ph type um i'm going to go with that it's not my specialism uh, or area expertise but I, you have no reason to disbelieve that in this case what is interesting though is the fact that this chap up in the corner here isn't wearing his apparently uh, so we don't know whether this is posed we can only assume it's posed because this person um, is, isn't wearing his uh, to the gun itself though is some interesting features you've got the early mark one um, tangent sight slide which is great what you have got though is just this single arch on the top cover so it shows it's not one of the earliest owl series guns it could still be an owl series gun uh, but it doesn't have the five arch top cover that you would see on those early guns um, so it's it's not lightened as much it is fitted with the sankster auxiliary tripod uh, which is brilliant to see and you know, we've got a couple of those in the collection uh, and they're really interesting so you know, we have fired from it it's quite it's remarkably stable um, it's being fit there it's got this long leather strap here so that this sort of it goes up here and helps you uh, carry the gun it's got its early condenser hose as well so screws on doesn't just clip screws on and then this metal flexible tubing goes back into a bag 
to, to hide the steam, not necessarily to, uh, to to save water, but to hide the steam. As a fluted water jacket, as we'd expect at this stage of the war, you know, no reason not to. Uh, flat muzzle coat, muzzle attachment there. Here again, we'd expect to see that. And what we have got though, that is nice is the uh, elevating disc cover so this is graduated you know it's a brass cover on a smooth wheel and then you've got grooves in it that tell you how far how far down to put it um, you know it is detachable so you know it's great to, to see that there um, what we've also got on the gun um anything in particular nope let's uh, let's move on then so you know ammunition belt is clearly uh, in use um you know, and it's being fired by the looks of it um nothing particular to note about the tripod so we uh, oh yes there is there's the direction dial as well so that is the early mark one direction dial a single piece not two pieces like the later uh, direction dial um, single piece of brass we do have one of these in the collection as well and um, you know lucky to do so we also have one that's been converted into a later mark ii which is quite interesting uh, but this just slips over has 360 degrees marked on it and a, a, a very rudimentary pointer on the other side what you have um, just as we're sort of looking at ar around uh, it looks like it be a binoculars case or something over there um discarded i don't i think they're sandbags rather than packs not 100 percent sure um and we could just see the strap here which is really interesting because as i as i noticed in, in the intro we do have the opportunity to zoom out of this photo a little bit so we'll do that now when we've looked at the slightly uncropped version we don't really get any uh, additional information other than the fact there's a shovel down here and we can just see the edge of what that strap's attached to uh, and it looks to be the spare parts case there's no new detail anywhere else what is great with this photo though is the consecutive photo in the series so this is 3995 3996 is off the same machine gun crew but from a different angle so we get a great opportunity to see it from the other side and here is that alternative view so let's just zoom in a little bit to that we could have done that previously apologize for that uh, but here we go so on this side we can see that yes that is indeed a spare parts case by the looks of it so in you know, the machine gun a spare parts case you can see better that there is um, the this strap here is the uh, little canvas case for his uh, ph helmet slung over his shoulder you know the, the the number two though isn't wearing one you know it's not visible there um but the, you know, what can we see it looks like the ammunition belt is actually jumping and the cocking handle is uh, slightly raised so we actually think they're right in the process of firing with these photos um and just see this a little bit outline there of the cape machine gunner's cape remarkable actually that it's called a cape um much more like a waistcoat but yes a cape is the official nomenclature for it uh, the other side of the gun doesn't show us anything um, anything more detail um but looking at the men themselves oh, well, just one moment it might be that their equipment is slung over to the left of the photo here uh, hence why they're not wearing it but looking at the men you know, standard service dress jacket standard service dress trousers they've got their putties long putties tied up to the uh, to their knees here yeah that's what we'd expect to see they've got their ammunition boots on as well um, but in both cases they have a spoon tucked in to the top of their putties now that you could be accused of that being a reenactorism if you were um, out at a public display a living history display or something like that but in this case, both of these gentlemen have it. Now, it's not something you do see in many, many places, uh, but it is something that's evident here. So let's say it's, it's great that we get this opportunity to see another side of the same photo. That's quite a rare occurrence, uh, but they're both here. So, you know, take full advantage of it. Hope that was interesting for you. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.